Hey everyone, I'm back for another look at classic TV shows to watch while you're stuck at home. There's no particular order to these, and uh, basically these are just shows that are called for my personal DVD collection. Uh, last time I did 10 shows, and I'm going to do another 10 shows today. So the first one that I'm going to talk about today is Batman, the 1960s TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. Um, it's so funny, like, because growing up, we watched this show. It was in reruns pretty much all through my childhood. And, you know, as a kid, superheroes, it's a lot of fun. Um, but as an adult, you just enjoy this on a whole other level. I mean, this show is hilarious. For those of you who aren't familiar with it or don't really remember, this was a comedy series. It was nominated in the comedy categories at the Emmy Awards. Um, also, if you weren't around back then, you're probably not aware of just how big a pop culture phenomenon this show was. All in the Family, again, like Batman, huge monster hit at the time that it was on television. This was the number one show on TV for five years in a row. Saturday nights, 8 o'clock, CBS, must-see television. Everybody gathered around the TV and watched this show. Um, to say that this is groundbreaking is an understatement. Um, everybody pretty much knows what this show did for television and its influence on TV. Um, my personal favorites are, I'd say, the first four seasons. And it kind of changes in tone in the fifth season, but it's still really good. And then season eight of this series, like, again... Wow. The first spinoff of All in the Family was Maud. This show, now again, All in the Family is dated. This, also dated. It's very, 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 very much a product of its time. And if you're only familiar with B. Arthur from Golden Girls, check this out. She's very different. Um, in a later season, she's diagnosed as bipolar, which explains so much. And I think at that time, in the mid to late 70s, bipolar was not a, a, a very recognizable named disease or affliction. Um, it explains a lot because this mod is like the liberal female version of Archie Bunker. Loud, outspoken, short-tempered, um, but liberal as opposed to bigoted like Archie. Um, definitely check this out. Again, I would say the thing that really hit home for me re-watching this entire series is women's rights and how far we have not come in all these decades since. Look at it. It's really interesting to watch so much about women in the workplace, um, going back to work, husbands not liking it. There's several episodes scattered throughout where like she'll, she was a real estate agent at one point. There's another point where she runs for a political office. She may have to move to Albany. Walter, her husband, is totally against it. It deals with alcoholism. Um, there's a lot of stuff about sexism in the workplace. Um, Walter uses Carol, um, Maud's hot young daughter, played by Adrian Barbeau, to like, woo a client. Um, there's a lot of stuff like this. It's really fascinating to watch this. I highly recommend it. Bo to like, woo a client. Um, there's a lot of stuff like this. It's really fascinating to watch this. I highly recommend it. Next, one of the more um, subtle, uh, sophisticated comedies out there. I would kind of put this in the same category as uh, news radio or taxi. Sort of a sleeper hit, if you will. Never a smash hit, but it ran for four seasons. It's very highly regarded. Season one, the Thanksgiving episode, one of the greatest comedy episodes in the history of television. Um, but WKRP in Cincinnati, great show. And speaking of it, news radio. Here's another one, sleeper hit. I mean, actually, this one was never actually that much of a hit show, but it ran for a few seasons and um, was kind of a quiet, more intellectual, cerebral sitcom along the lines of, WKRP. I mean, they could get wacky when they wanted to, but that's another one. More for people who have more sophisticated tastes. And speaking of people with more sophisticated tastes, The Bob Newhart Show from the 1970s. Part of the classic CBS Saturday Night lineup. Um, again, 
not like one of those outrageously funny shows, more subtle, quiet, intellectual humor, following on the heels of the Mary Tyler Moore show. This was, in fact, MTM Productions' second produced series after the Mary Tyler Moore show and ran on Saturday nights immediately following the Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh, but it has a more gentle, subtler humor. Um, definitely a must-see. And sticking with Bob Newhart, we have his 1980s show, Newhart, which is very different from the Bob Newhart show. This one is um, almost like Green Acres. Very similar in that you get the city couple moving to a little small rural town, and everybody in that town is just like bizarre, absurd, crazy. Um, and it's very, very funny. Of course, the final episode at the end of season eight is to this day considered probably the best series finale in the history of television, at least as far as comedies are concerned. Um, you may notice on here, if you're at all familiar with the series, there are a couple different faces because the first season was different. The first season is shot on videotape. There's a young woman by the name of Leslie, who's their maid. She's like a local college student who's uh, buying for the Olympic ski team. There's Kirk, the obnoxious guy who runs the diner next door. Um, in season two, Leslie is replaced by her cousin Stephanie, the heiress, who is jilts her senior citizen groom-to-be and kind of leaves her rich family and moves in here and becomes the maid. And then after season two, Kirk leaves, sells his diner to Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, and in comes Peter Scolari as Michael, the producer of the t local TV station, who hires Dick, played by Bob Newhart, to host the local talk show. And the series, and the series goes to film from videotape. Um, so again, it's another one, like the first season's really good, but it gets better as it goes along. Um, as, um, now we're gonna go with shows that are probably not as um, classic in the sense that they're great television shows, excellent writing, excellent performing. These are more nostalgia shows. Um, if you wanna know what TV was like in the 60s, these next two are really good representations of sitcoms of the 60s. That Girl with Marlo Thomas. This is a great show. It's gentle, it's um, it's sort of a, a bridge between Lucy and Mary Tyler Moore. Um, this one predates Mary Tyler Moore by four years. She's a single girl, um, newly out of college, moves to New York to pursue an acting career. And so every week she's got a different part-time job or she gets an acting gig through the seasons. You see her do all kinds of different odd jobs, including acting jobs. But she has a regular boyfriend, Donald. She gets into wacky situations sometimes. Donald always kind of rescues her from them. But she is independent in the sense that she's got a job of her own, a life of her own. Her parents live in the suburbs. Sometimes her dad always kind of comes to town and, you know, he wants his little girl home. He doesn't want her there. So it's, it is kind of a bridge. It's got a little bit of Lucy-esque comedy to it. But it's stepping in the direction that the Mary Tyler Moore show picks up at the end. And of course, the theme song from this is just one of the best ever. So you have to watch this. And so in line with that, 1960s classic sitcom, very, very gentle, probably doesn't hold up so great by today's standards, but it did a lot that most shows back then didn't. And that's Family Affair. Again, produced by the same team that did My Three Sons. It's very similar in style. Um, Brian Keith plays a um, globe-trotting um, architectural engineer. He builds things like bridges around the world. So he's constantly traveling. And he's a ladies' man. He's a bachelor. He's always got a woman on his arm when he's home. He lives in this beautiful penthouse apartment near Central Park in New York. His um, recently widow, his brother and his wife, have passed away. We don't ever find out how they pass away, but they've passed away and a year's time has passed. And his the three children of his brother and sister-in-law are brought to him to live with him. And so he's teenage sissy and the twins, Buffy and Jody. And then Mr. French, played by Sebastian Cabot, is his gentleman's gentleman. 
And of course, he's very proper and very British. And of course, having children in the house just totally upsets his lifestyle. But he, by default, becomes the nanny of the family. And um, this show is notable because it actually deals with seri the, the real issues of what it would be like to be a kid at five, six years old and lose your parents and suddenly be flown from Indiana to live in New York City in this penthouse with a very rich uncle. Uh, and then their lifestyle is very like, it's rich. They live a rich lifestyle. Let's, let's face it. They don't live like most of us. Uh, the world they live in in New York is very different, but they do deal with times like there, there are episodes where maybe the kids from school who are in lower class neighborhoods that they'll, they'll interact with, but it deals with the issues of being orphaned and with not having parents to go to like, you know, a father daughter dinner. Um, there's an episode devoted to just taking the kids back to their hometown to jog their memories because they're parents died when they were so small that they're losing their memories of them and where they were born. So they take them on a trip to help them see where their family came from. And so it's really interesting that it deals with that thing. Um, so that's, again, I suggest trying that one out. Maybe not watch the entire series, but just check it out. And then I also decided to go with um, the original five seasons of Saturday Night Live from 1975 to 1980. Season one is real interesting to watch because you see how the show kind of develops. You know, the main people that we remember, the not ready for primetime players as they were called initially, um, was not originally just the six people here that you see on the cover. It was, um, there were actually about three or four other people, a um, couple of older actors as well. And in the early episodes, there were multiple acts that were guests. It wouldn't just be a guest host like George Carlin or Lily Tomlin or Candace Bergen, but there would also be like a musical, and a musical act, like they have this, but there also might be a magician, there might be a stand-up comic, and so it was more like an old school, like vaudeville show almost. And these guys barely appeared, except for one or two bits in the first few weeks, and then eventually they dropped half the actors who were on the show, and it got narrowed down to the people we remember, and they became the show. So it's really interesting to watch. And also to kind of see how it was shot back then compared to how it looks today. I mean, it looks pretty rough around the edges compared to what the current Saturday Night Live looks like. So those are my recommendations for comfort food to watch while you're stuck at home. And I will be doing a series of podcasts devoted to each individual series um, in the future. I don't know when I'm going to go online with that, but it's coming. Stay tuned.